Good morning, Luke and Annabelle and Sophia. I'm so happy to be with you today. We're going to make some beautiful fish, and you got a fishy handout, I hope. Go ahead and make sure you print that out so you can get loads of ideas. And what we're going to do, we're going to take our big piece of paper. You'll need your black crayon or oil pastel and your watercolors. And we are going to start by going over, kind of put your hand down in the middle that gives up the SNF space and you're going to put a circle and a bigger circle around it and that's going to be the eye of your fish. And over here near the edge of the paper make a sideways letter V and that's going to be the fish's mouth. Now if we go to the other end of the paper, oops I've got my watercolors, if we go to the other end of the paper, we want to save a lot of room for the tail. So I am going to put my hand there, and that will give me at least that much room for my tail. And I'm going to put another letter V. And then when I go to draw the tail, there's plenty of room. I'm going to now draw a rainbow from the top of the V to the top of the V over here. And I'm going to draw another line there. And that gives me the body of this fish. Okay, now I'm going to have to decide what kind of tail they want, if, or a tail I want. If you look at the handout, you'll see all sorts of ideas for tails. For this tail, I think I'm going to go out and out. And I'll flow in with a wavy line. That feels fun today. And I think I will make on the bottom for mine a wave. This is a wavy fish. He's going to look delicate. And a wavy line there. And at the top, let's see, I don't know what I want to do at the top. I didn't leave myself a lot of room. If you drew him up further down, you could make more of a top. So if you decide you want that, try that. I'm going to just draw some waves there. Oh, that's fun. That's going to be fun to paint. Let's put in the center of his body a little circle. And from the circle, you can draw a line out and a line out. We're going to give him, I think it's the dorsal fin. I can't remember. But it's the one they use to keep themselves balanced. We'll put that in there. And then I'm going to go over here and give him some nice lips. That'll be fun to paint. And now we need to talk about lines. We did a lot of line work this semester. We had our line dinosaurs. And um, I can't remember what else, but I know we talked about lines. And what you want to do is kind of put in different lines to make different ideas. If I put wavy lines here, that's going to give that a different appearance than if I was to do straight stripes. And you could do straight stripes. In fact, I think I'll come down here and put some straight stripes. And that just gives it a more solid appearance, and this is a more floating, flowy appearance. Um, we could do some bars. See, the stripes don't have an in-between place, but if we put little bars, we could paint or color the bars. Oh, there we go. Um, I think for this one, I think I'm just going to leave this one alone. I I just would like to choose to leave that one just one, one color. Here I think I'll put in some wavy stripes. And I might even put in some little line in there as well. Now, I have at my house a lot of beautiful crayons. If you have some crayons, you might go get those. Um, but if you want to do the whole thing in paints, you can do the whole thing in paints. But I'm going to go get my crayons and color a few things on this fish's crayons first. Mainly, I think I just want to play with my crayons because I haven't got to this year. And they've put out some really pretty ones. They've put out their glitter and their pearls. And uh, if you come and do some summer camp with me, we're going to have time to play with our glitter and pearl crayons. So I'm using, let's see, ooh, Moonlit Pond. That's pretty, 
perfect. One of the pearl ones called Moonlit Pond. And I'm going to color a little bit of this fin. And I don't know if you've remembered, if we if we talked about it before, uh, I think we may have had one chance early in our semester to talk about when you color with crayons as you get older, you try to do it in little batches, short, short strokes that are close together rather than trying to do a big area. You color in small layers so that the color goes on nice and even and pretty and doesn't look like a streaky mess. So here, hopefully there's pretty good coverage and I don't have a lot of spots that I have to go back and fill in. They're just all even. And I want to darken it right up here by the, where the fin begins and then let it kind of go out a little bit. And I don't know if we've talked about this either. I, I think I'd like to do that this summer. During summer camp, you can layer crayons on top of crayons. So I'm gonna take this purple one. It's called Lavender Silk. Ooh, that'll be pretty from the Pearl Pack. And I'm gonna do a second layer of color. Again, I'm keeping it really light. I'm holding it like that because I don't want a tired hand. And so I'm not gripping very hard and I'm using kind of the full tip, not just the tippy tip. I'm using the full tip to lay my color, which is a lot of fun. And now that I've got two kinds of purple, that's really a lot more interesting than if you just lay one color. And so I think I'm gonna continue playing with my crayons just a little bit before I get into the paint. Here I've got Let's see. I like the names of crayons. This one's called Bubblegum. Oh, I'll, I'll enjoy the bubblegum. So here I'm going to, again, you can watch me lay these short strokes close together. All the way down. No giant movements. Little movements. And you can color a long time like this without your hand feeling tired because I'm not really pressing down that hard. And I'm not feeling like, oh, I have to color it dark, dark pink on the first try, because I wanted to show you this. So I've done one gentle layer of color, and now I'm gonna go back and lay another gentle layer of color on top, not pressing down very hard at all. And now I've got more there, two layers there, one layer there but I didn't scrub hard or make my hand hurt. I just laid it down really gently so that actually my hand doesn't feel at all tired. I don't feel like I've been coloring a lot at all, just really lightly. And as you get older, you'll be able to do that a lot more easily, but it's something to think about. All right, I think I'll put some I think I'll give him an orange eye right there. Ooh, there's a pretty blue hiding in my pack. Let me get my blue. And I've got, again, I'm, I wanted to play with my weird crayons, the glitters and the pearls, but even just a normal box of crayons, aren't those colors just beautiful? When I was a kid, my favorite is sea green and sky blue. I would always try to get those out of the box and make as many things sea green and sky blue as I can. Those are my favorite colors from the normal box. I'd love it if you would text me the picture of your fish and then tell me your favorite crayon colors. I always like to know what people enjoy the most with their crayons. And I could paint the lips and you can paint the lips, if, especially if you don't have any crayons at home, but I want to, I want to use crayon. There's this really shiny blue. This one's called Cloudy Sky. And I am going to do two layers of Cloudy Sky. There's my first layer. And I'm going to go in one more time. One more layer of Cloudy Sky. Oh, that was fun. 
Okay, so I think now it's probably a good time to get out my paint. Hopefully you still have plenty of paint left. You can use whatever colors you want. Um, I wanted to do projects during this time where you can use just a lot of choice and a lot of creativity and hopefully a big old pan of paints. I think nothing says creativity and choice like a big old pan of paints. So I'm gonna put up my crayons. I hope you're good about cleaning up your spaces when you're done with art. Don't make your parents do it. You can clean up your art. And I like to clean up kind of as I go along. I like to keep my workspace pretty neat. So if I know I'm done with crayons and I'm done, I'm gonna get that all put back nice and neat. And I'll come back in just a moment with my paint. So let's paint. And I think it's important to remember to keep cleaning off your brush. And remember when you wake up a color with water, wake it up with a lot of water. You want these colors to really move and glide. And I am going to just start in with purple. You can paint whatever color you want. And the minute this paint starts sticking, like the brush isn't gliding, that's when you just want to add a little more water. And with watercolor, you don't always have to go in and add more paint every time. Sometimes just a little water will make it easier. But on the same note, you don't want to add so much water that the paint or the, the paper could start to get um, where it could tear. So I just try to keep I don't I, I try to keep big puddles from forming on the paper. I don't want big puddles. One thing I like to do also is lay a little water, not like a puddle, but just like I have a stripe of water there. And then I think I'll throw in some blue just to see what happens. I like the way they move. The colors move when you do wet into wet watercolor. And I'll keep moving. So that's all nice and purpley. And I think I want to do, let's see, I did some bright green crayon there. I think I'll do some bright green paint on the fins. Now I'm being pretty nice and neat here on the fish, but if you were to accidentally go out of bounds, you could do one of two things. You could make a sea background, like you could paint the sea, and whatever your mistake was could be just something floating in the sea. Or you can cut these out when you're done. They're pretty fun to look at cut out, and you could make a whole bunch of them cut out. And you don't even have to have a lot of art paper to do this. You could use, if your parents have a printer and they'll let you have some paper from the printer, it won't be as tough as this paper. This paper's pretty tough, and it, it'll take a lot of water before it falls apart. You'll just have to be careful not to use as much water if you're gonna use the paints to paint it. I think I'll probably cut mine out when it's dry. As you can see, I went out of bounds there, so I had to choose like, oh, how will I handle that? Will I cut this guy out? Or will I design an ocean? I think I'm just going to cut them out. Give me a chance to play with my scissors. All right. So I paint, or I put in some oh, pink crayon there. So I think I'm going to put some pink stripe beside. But it would have looked just as good with yellow. There's no rules on this today. Just whatever makes you happy to paint. All right, now up here in the fin, I think I will use yellow. I said yellow and I like the way yellow and purple look together. There we go. And now I get my nice big fin over here. Oh, this is a fun fish. I'm going to paint orange. I haven't got to use my orange yet today, so I'm going to paint orange. Well, that is so happy and bright. 
And you'll notice I'm going one direction in each area. Like I'm not going to go up and down and then left and right. I'm just going one direction. I like these nice bright watercolors. Okay, so there we have it. My expressive fish. And I think I might make a bunch more of him today using, oh, I might even use old newspapers. This would be fun to make on all sorts of things. And use your drawing guide to make choices. And of course you can just kind of come up with your own things as well. I miss you guys. I hope you're having a wonderful day. And um, again, shoot me some pictures and tell me what your favorite colors are. And I'd love to hear from you. Stay well. Bye-bye.